start a new recording. Okay, Bochum Aboyim. Welcome everyone. Although no one's left, but uh, we're gonna teach now from the from from the holy Kedusha Slavi. I don't know why the camera moved like that. It's not sitting still. Okay. We'll learn a few terrors from the Kedusha Slavi. I'm sorry I don't have very much energy tonight. Things have been pretty crazy here. But I have faith that things will turn around. And uh, hopefully be able to heal everything. Start right from the beginning of Parshas Yisra. After that, we'll, we'll do the first three, four, are pretty short, and we'll skip around a little bit. V'yishma Yisra was kol asher asa Hashem l'moyish al-Yisrael amai. Jethro heard all the things that the Lord did to Moses and to Israel, his people. Exodus chapter 18, verse 1. Perish. What does this mean? Zesh asa nekama mitzrayim lohaya machmus God did not take revenge on the Egyptians just because they were wicked and violated God's will. Only the God only took revenge on them because of Moses and his people Israel. So it says that God is fighting for them in Egypt, for them specifically, for the servants of God. Meaning, had they not, um, had they not persecuted God's people, God's servants, they would not have been punished. The, you know, God has patience with so much wickedness in the world, but not for the persecution of his people. Uh, and by his people, we mean those who identify as his people. Okay, next. You know, I'm, I'm not trying to make a racist statement about Jews. Anyone, it's not a, a racist statement at all. Okay. Exodus 18.11 Jethro says, Now I know that the Lord is greater than any of the gods. Because in the thing that they planned to do, that's what they were defeated in. Seems like this, says the Kedusha Slave, even near it. The Nation is Sachin Malchus Mokhama, Egan Anshim Mokhamta, Ashinoisha, Beroiv Chail, for Harig, Besoin of Harig Rav. Sometimes one kingdom will defeat another in war. They're saved with a big army, and they kill a lot of their enemies. That's the natural thing in the world. That he wins the whole war. But it's not going to add to the kingdom more people and more land than before necessarily but there's another type of victory he kills a lot of people and the king the king who's against the king will take his army living people, not just kill people. He'll take live people to his kingdom and rule over them. Meaning it's a greater victory when fewer people are killed and they are brought under the kingdom of the other king rather than just killing a lot of people because it's a waste. It's a, it's a horrible thing. War is hell. 
obviously the Rebbe here is talking in the form of a marshal. He's saying a parable. What is the parable? So we find this level is be- this is a higher level of glory for the king covered what he had before. He's going to rule over more people. His land is set from one people to another, etc. It's bigger. So when God wanted to save the Israelites from the hand of the Egyptians, he thought he would destroy them in water. Rashi in Parshish Shmos says, "Hi, Ayocho Lahovi Eish Liabish Amayim of Atlan." God could have taken fire to to um, God. God could have um, dried up all the water with with fire. If you wouldn't see how strong God is over the water, meaning it's natural for water to be evaporated by fire, but it's it, by heat. It's not natural for water to stand up as a wall. That shows God's power. That the water has to listen to God's word. And when God says stand up like a wall, the water has to do it. This he does by himself. The water, he said, the water had to judge the Egyptians. The Bay Yas Mitzray. Shamal called Var Vitibu Es Mitzrayim. So then the water came, listened to God's voice, and drowned the Egyptians as well. There we see there were more things following God's will, meaning he didn't destroy the water, but he brought the water under his rulership. This is like the king who doesn't kill the other the other kingdom but adds them to his own kingdom. So this is a greater greatness. This is the power there are angels in heaven that represent kind of like the United Nations, representing each nation in heaven. They're called Sarim, they're called princes. This is hinted to in the Bible, in the book of Isaiah, where, God, where Isaiah says, I will judge above and below. Those, the, 